I've built significant wealth with real estate investing and you can do the same. The best part is that you can do this with other people's money. But what about that saying that you have to have money to make money? Well, this is true, but that's only the first part of the expression. The second part is, it doesn't have to be your own money. In this video, I'll break down four ways to invest in real estate using none of your own money. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share some exciting news with you about how you can get started using these four strategies. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars of net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. The most common question that I get with first time investors is, how much money do I need to get started in real estate? And the answer is none, if you use the right strategies. The problem is most people don't know these strategies exist or they don't know how to execute them. So if lack of capital or money is your barrier to real estate investing, it's time to take those barriers away. Learn and perfect these four strategies until you do have your own money and then you can switch up your investments. But for now, focus on ways to make money without using your money. Number four is wholesaling. In wholesaling, a wholesaler contracts a home with a seller, then finds an interested party to buy it. The wholesaler then contracts the home with the new buyer at a higher price than with the seller and keeps the difference as profit. This is very common practice in the business world and we do it in the real estate world as well. Think about any product you buy on Amazon. The seller of that product bought the product at wholesale value and then is selling it at retail and keeping the profit. In real estate, we do the same, but we don't have to purchase the property and pay for it. We can simply get the property under contract with a seller, ideally under market value, and then turn to a potential buyer and sell it to them. This strategy works really well if the new buyer is still purchasing the property under market value as well. It's good for the wholesaler because they make a fee for finding the opportunity and bringing it to the buyer, and it's good for the end buyer because they are still getting a property under market value. Wholesaling fees can range anywhere from $1,000 to $100,000. It really depends on the market, the property, and what value the wholesaler is able to get the property under contract for in relation to the fair market value. This strategy is also very risk averse if done properly because the wholesaler has a conditional offer with the seller and if they cannot find a suitable buyer, they back out of the deal with no repercussions. There is one caveat that I should mention and that is that in most cases, a deposit will need to be placed to the seller in some provinces and states. So you may need some form of cash or credit to get you through that conditional time. This can range depending on the price of the house and the expectations of the seller. I've seen deposits as low as $500. So even if you had to put that on a credit card for 14 to 21 days, the interest on that would be very minimal. Number three is a vendor take back. A vendor take back is when a seller of a property is willing to hold temporary or long-term financing on a property that they are looking to sell. Why would a seller want to hold financing on their own property if they're looking to sell? Well, there are many different reasons that may present themselves. There are benefits to sellers from a tax perspective where they get to defer profits. There are also benefits to a seller if they plan to take the proceeds of the sale and invest them. A buyer may be able to offer them a higher rate of interest than what they might get elsewhere. Plus, there's the added benefit if the buyer defaults on the seller financing loan, the seller can take back the property which they are already familiar with because they have owned it for some time. The benefits of seller financing for a buyer are that they can potentially get financing for a large portion of the purchase from the bank, perhaps 75 to 80% loan to value, and the remaining 20 to 25% required to purchase the property can come from the seller, so they may not need to have any of their own capital invested in that transaction. Most buyers who use seller financing plan to lift the value of the property through renovation or by optimizing revenue, and after a period of time would do a refinance of the property, pay out the seller financing loan, and hold the property ongoing with potentially no money invested. Number two is raising capital. There are various real estate transactions that you could raise money for. An apartment building purchase, a development project, or even something as simple as a flip. On our eight unit conversion projects that we're doing in Toronto, we use equity partners to finance the transaction. This is sometimes referred to as syndication, where we're bringing together a group of investors to invest in a project. By bringing in a group of investors, that allows the investors to contribute a smaller amount of money than if there was a single investor. This also allows them to diversify their portfolio by investing in multiple transactions instead of putting all of their eggs in one basket. As an investor who is raising the capital, it allows me to use 
other people's money to complete the project. And I bring my expertise and experience to the table on a larger transaction that most investors would not tackle on their own. Now, this may not be something that you do as your very first transaction, but as you get more comfortable as a real estate investor, it's definitely something you're going to want to look at. There are rules to raising capital though, so make sure you understand them fully before going out and raising money. Check out this video on seven ways that you can raise capital after you watch this video. The other benefit of larger transactions like this is that we often include fees like acquisition fees and management fees. And therefore, as a syndicator, I'm able to get paid at the beginning of the transaction and throughout the transaction and charge those fees back to the projects. So not only am I making money on the project, but I also don't have any capital invested. Before you find out about the final strategy, let me invite you to something that will accelerate your real estate investing success. In my level one and level two master class, I will elaborate on these strategies and give you the exact framework to executing these methods so that you can avoid failure. To find out more about getting registered for one of the upcoming sessions, you can check out my website at darrenvoros.com forward slash courses. And the number one way to invest in real estate with none of your own money is joint venture partnering. A joint venture partnership is when two parties come together to purchase a property. While there are many different structures that a joint venture partnership can take on, the most common scenario is that there is a working partner and a money partner. The working partner is someone who's going to lend time to the transaction and the money partner is the one who is lending the money. That's why they are called the money partner. The working partner might be someone willing to go out and find the transaction, deal with the renovation, put the tenants in place, manage the property, and deal with any ongoing issues related to the tenants and the property itself. That is going to require a lot of time. So the working partner may be willing to exchange their time for not having any of their own money invested. The good news is that for every working partner out there, there is usually a money partner who wants the exact opposite. They want to invest in the real estate market, but they may not have the time or the expertise to do so. So they're looking to partner with someone who can manage the transaction. You can see why this is so beneficial to both parties in this situation. And if you as the working partner have a specialized skill, such as you're a contractor, realtor, or property manager, there may be tremendous opportunity to build a real estate portfolio without having any of your own money invested. As you can see, there are many different ways that we can invest in real estate without using any of our own money. So if that's been your barrier for entry into the real estate market, you can take that barrier away, learn how to perfect these strategies and go out there and start investing with other people's money. If you have questions related to investing in real estate with none of your own money or other real estate investing related questions, feel free to drop those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.